On December 29, 1890, the temperatures in Western Dakota Territory ranged from a frigid 12 degrees to a balmy 30 degrees with a west southwest wind of 20 miles an hour. That made the wind chill factor of bone chilling minus two to 14 degrees. Hi, I am Lillian Durflinger Witt and I am super excited to be working with South Dakota Humanities and to share some South Dakota history with you. Behind me in this surrounding area through here is the Wounded Knee Creek. And this area right here is where on that heart-rending day, the 7th Cavalry, accompanied by four Hotchkiss guns that were mounted on the hills behind the creek and under the command of Colonel John Forsyth, surrounded and attacked the many Kanja Lakota Sioux people who were camped here and led by Chief Spotted Elk, or as some people know him, Chief Bigfoot. Approximately 300 men, women, and children were slaughtered on that tragic, bitter cold winter day. Dakota daughters, Joyce Jefferson, Jerry, Geraldine Gosen Center, and myself put on a play that takes place in Dakota territory in the 1800s. It begins right after the Civil War and ends with this story of the Wounded Knee Massacre. Dakota Daughters also puts on a play that we call Daddy's Dreams. Our daddies all had dreams. They were in the military and they lived in South Dakota where they made, raised their families and made those dreams come to life. And I do a first person interpretation of Annie Talent, the first white woman to come to the Black Hills. In 1874, Annie Talent, her husband, her son, and 23 other men left Sioux City, Iowa, and came to Dakota Territory, where they camped on French Creek near present day Custer. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day. And I do hope to see you all down the road. Thank you.